the red-tailed hawk is one of the most common and familiar raptors in North America. Maybe if you're like me, you think you've pretty much got the red-tailed hawk all figured out. Like, we all know that the scientific name is Hawkus rubricaudatus, right? But of course now you're yelling at the screen telling me that that's not the scientific name of the red-tailed hawk. And you're right, I was just testing you. So, how much do we really know about the red-tailed hawk? According to recent surveys, about one-third of the people in the United States over the age of 16 identify as birders. That's around 96 million people, which is amazing. And that's just the U.S. No doubt North America has millions of birders in Mexico and Canada, too. Of all these millions of birders, represented by this first circle, what proportion consider themselves red-tailed hawk experts? That's the second circle. Let's see if we can increase the size of the second circle today. Let's fill in some knowledge gaps by looking at a few of the lesser-known facts about the amazing red-tailed hawk. Except for maybe the bald eagle, the red-tailed hawk is the quintessential North American raptor. We find this species across the continent, from central Alaska to southern Mexico. The northernmost populations are migratory, but most of the red-tailed hawks in the U.S. and Mexico are year-round residents. The global population for the species is estimated at somewhere between 2 and 3 million. To get your head around that number, imagine that the city of Houston, Texas was populated not by people, but entirely by hawks. Interestingly, the species is actually more widespread these days than it was a few hundred years ago. That's kind of the opposite trend we see for many birds, right? Sadly, many bird populations in North America have dramatically declined in the last 100 years. But not the red-tailed hawk! Red tails didn't used to be all that common in eastern North America. But as European Americans chopped down the forests, they unintentionally created hawk habitat. And the hawks expanded into that region. And over the last 100 years or so, the species has become more common in the Great Plains. In this case, it's because there are actually more trees in that region. The plains used to be vast grasslands, but people have altered the ecosystem, and now there are many more trees. So that's interesting, right? Fewer trees in one region caused an increase in red-tailed hawks. But in another region, a similar increase in hawkiness was caused by an increase in tree cover. And this brings us to the subject of habitat. Red tails prefer to breed in open or semi-open habitats that have plenty of elevated nesting and perching sites. We're talking elevated sites like tall trees, cliffs, or buildings. Even desert habitats will work as long as there are some large cactuses like saguaros around. Basically, the red-tailed hawk doesn't like dense forests or treeless grasslands. They want some trees, but not too many trees. It seems there's a sweet spot for these birds where the density of trees is just right. So you can imagine how human-caused changes to the amount of tree cover in North America have allowed red tails to expand their range. In their semi-open, semi-forested habitats, red-tailed hawks can often be seen engaged in a behavior called kiting. This is where a hawk or other bird uses rising air currents to stay aloft with minimal flapping, allowing it to scan the ground for prey from a fixed position in the sky. Kiting is like hovering without actually hovering. The bird uses the wind to its advantage. I mean, just look at how perfectly still this hawk is. Oh, wait, no, actually, that's a photo. <laughs> but here is an actual video. Still pretty impressive. Notice how the hawk's head stays locked in position. It's incredible. Anyway, in terms of habitat, red-tailed hawks are no strangers to life in the city as well. These are highly adaptable birds. They sometimes nest on skyscrapers or among trees in city parks. And they hunt for rats, mice, squirrels, and pigeons. We've already established that Hawkus rubricaudatus is not the scientific name for this bird. So, how do ornithologists classify the red-tailed hawk? The real scientific name is Buteo jamaicensis. The red tail is one of about 27 species in the genus Buteo. But what's the deal with the second part? the specific epithet, 
Jamaicensis. It has the word Jamaica in there, right? Well, this species was first described by Western scientists, officially, way back in 1781. The specimen used for the original description was from, you guessed it, Jamaica. That first red-tailed hawk specimen would be what scientists call the type specimen, the one used for the official description of a newly discovered species. And since the type specimen was collected in Jamaica, that island country is the type locality of the red-tailed hawk. The name Buteo jamaicensis made its debut in the 13th edition of Linnaeus's book Systema Naturae. Remember Linnaeus or Linnaeus? He's the Swedish dude who came up with the scientific classification system. But the common name for the bird given in Linnaeus's book was not red-tailed hawk. Nope, it was the cream-colored buzzard. The red-tailed hawks in Jamaica have considerably lighter plumage than red-tailed hawks in many other populations and thus the name cream-colored buzzard. Now, if saying Buteo jamaicensis is too bothersome for you, you could always shorten it. You could say B-Jam or Boojam or even Booja. This whole Jamaica thing brings us to another topic, and that is subspecies. Boojam is actually made up of a bunch of distinct subspecies. There are between 14 and 16 of them, depending on who you ask. They look different and generally live in different parts of the North American continent. A couple of the better known subspecies are Crider's hawk and Harlan's hawk. Crider's red-tailed hawk has the scientific name Buteo jamaicensis criderii. This is a very pale, more or less white form of the red tail. The tail feathers are white with washed out rusty or pinkish tips. The Crider's subspecies breeds in the northern Great Plains, in South Dakota and Wyoming and north into South Central Canada. Then we have Harlan's red-tailed hawk, often just called Harlan's hawk. This is a super dark form of the species. Buteo jamaicensis harlani is dark brown overall, but with whitish flight feathers in the wings. And importantly, the tail is whitish with a dark tip. In other words, this red tail ain't got a red tail. It's the most dramatically distinct of the 14 to 16 subspecies. In fact, Harlan's hawk is so different that, once upon a time, ornithologists considered it to be a full-on species. The Harlani subspecies is a long-distance migrant that breeds in the interior of Alaska and the Yukon in Canada. Ornithologists are still trying to sort out all of these subspecies. It's a bit messy because there's some uncertainty about their validity and their geographic distribution. Scientists are focusing on using genetics and morphology to better understand the red-tailed hawk's evolution, its subspecies characteristics, and its distribution in understudied areas, particularly Mexico, Central America, Alaska, and Canada. Moving on to some physical traits in these birds. With all of these subspecies and their plumage variations, it can be sometimes hard to identify a red-tailed hawk in the field. Complicating the situation is the fact that most subspecies have a light form or morph, as well as a dark morph. And juvenile hawks don't yet have the namesake red tail yet. They have pale tails with some barring, like this guy here. Red-tailed hawks don't get their adult feathers, including the characteristic red tail, until around the beginning of their second year of life. But the good news for us is that there are a few key features that can make it easier to ID a red tail in flight. First, look at the bird's body shape. Look for a large hawk with broad, rounded wings and a short, wide tail. That narrows your options down to Buteo jamaicensis and a few of its close cousins. Second, Look at the underside of the wings. Look for a dark bar at the wing's leading edge between the bird's shoulder and wrist. This is called a patagial mark. Third, many red tails have a band of darker feathers running across their belly. And one more pro tip, the iris color of a red-tailed hawk's eye, if you can see it, can tell you something about the bird's age. Juveniles have dark irises but by their first winter, they have yellow irises. The iris gradually changes to a soft brown in older hawks. Now, as a hawk expert, or soon-to-be hawk expert, you probably know about the Hollywood conspiracy around the voice of the red-tailed hawk. The harsh call or scream of the red tail has been used and abused by movie makers for decades. 
The hawk's scream is played over footage of just about any other raptor, especially the bald eagle. And a bald eagle sounds nothing like the red-tailed hawk. Now, biologically, why do red tails make their iconic call? The hawk's scream is often made as a warning or to express distress when its territory is invaded. Now, if you're digging this video, if you're finding it enjoyable and educational, I implore you to click the like button. And of course, if you love birds, consider subscribing to the channel to see more ornithology videos like this one. Perhaps one reason the red-tailed hawk is so widespread across North America is its diet. This is an opportunistic generalist predator. It's a jack of all trades, a hawk of all trades. Red tails have been documented eating over 500 species of small animals. Most of these, between 65 and 85%, are small mammals, like voles, ground squirrels, and rabbits. Around 10 to 15% of the diet is avian prey, including pigeons and game birds. Snakes and lizards comprise 5 to 10%, and an assortment of other things make up the remaining 5% of the diet. These would be things like amphibians, insects, and carrion. Sometimes, small animals don't wait around cringing in fear of being eaten by a hawk. Sometimes they take matters into their own hands by going on the offensive. Mobbing in birds is a behavior where individuals of one or more species harass a potential predator to drive it away from their territory or their nesting area. For example, in this photo, some American crows are mobbing a red tail. And in this video clip, a mountain bluebird attacks a hawk that is just chilling on its nest, minding its own business. Red-tailed hawks at the nest have even bigger problems in some situations, because the sworn enemy of this hawk is the great horned owl. The adversarial relationship between these two raptors probably exists because they compete for similar prey and for nesting sites. Both species may engage in aggressive interactions when defending their territories. Great horned owls often prey on red-tailed hawk nestlings and will even occasionally attack adult hawks. Like, check this video out. A great horned owl was doing a sort of home invasion on the nest of some red-tailed hawks. But here comes one of the hawks and BAM! But it can go both ways. This owl and its chick were having a relaxing afternoon when BAM! A red tail slams into the owl with its talons. Wow, totally brutal, right? Now, let's return to our circle diagram. And hey, look there. We've increased the number of red-tailed hawk experts in the world. That's a success. My work here is done. But if you already knew all of this stuff, then congratulations. You passed the test. You've confirmed your status as a red-tailed hawk expert. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time. Cheers.